The water is so clean due to the aqueducts that you can drink out of any fountain in Rome, but only in Rome. And um, this is actually the fountain that's at the bottom of the Spanish Steps, which connected the two towns way a long time ago. It, now it's all together, but it connected the two separate parts. Whenever Mussolini was in power, where he stayed, and then the other people that worked for him, I guess. And then this is the Fountain of Four Rivers. It's in the middle of the Pisa Navar. And it used to be a place where they would have like gladiator, gladiator games, and it's a huge oval. Now they do like singing out in the middle of it. And it's really kind of like a park, but it's all concrete. And then there's shops all around and restaurants all around the outside of the oval. This is the wedding cake. Um, it's the altar of, I think his name was like Patricia or something, but it was Mussolini's wife. And it's the only building that looks different in Rome. It's made out of a different material. It's made out of marble and nobody who's from Rome likes it because they didn't like Mussolini. So that was our first day. Our next day we went to see the Roman Forum and the Colosseum. And the Roman Forum was pretty cool, but there was so much of it that we didn't have time to like look at all of it. Um, but they're constantly working to preserve like all the original arches. So all the archways for pretty much every building was still is still there, just the buildings aren't there. The Colosseum, they took and they removed the top layer where they used to fight, the gladiators and animals used to fight. They took and removed it, and now you can see where the tunnels were that the water would either be let out to flood the arena or where they kept the prisoners before they would fight. Um, all of these like little things going down are the posts where the stadium seats used to be. They aren't there anymore, but you can see how the bricks were laid so that they used to be steps or seats. Um, and then this is a picture of me and Colin. Colin finally opened up. He didn't really talk to anybody at the first of the trip. And then towards the end of the trip, me and Colin became good friends. We actually <laughs> went to eat, me, him, and Emily. And then our last day in Rome, we went to see the Castle of San Angelo, which was pretty cool because um, the, the way that they had built it with the, the circle, and they made it to where there was holes to where they could flood it if people were trying to attack. So inside here, there's a tunnel at the very bottom of the big building that let the saint, or is that what it is? The priest. priest, yeah. The priest was able to escape from the Vatican and come to the castle of San Angelo if somebody was attacking Vatican City, or vice versa, he could go the other way. Um, and then this is from the top of that building, and that is Vatican City behind us, and the St. Peter's Basilica. And a fun fact, if you're born in the Vatican City, you're not a citizen of the Vatican City. You're a citizen of wherever your parents are from. There are no citizens of the Vatican City. Um, and then this was whenever we were inside the museums, which we ended up losing some people in the museums because they're so large. And so whenever we got to the Sistine Chapel and we were trying to go to Saint, inside of St. Peter's Basilica because we had tickets to go inside of it, um, we had a hard time doing that. But then come to find out the priest was holding a special event and so they ended up closing it anyways. So we couldn't go inside the Basilica in the end. But my favorite room inside the museums was the geography room. They showed like the very first maps drawn and there was like, at the top you could tell how they used like their scales and stuff to show it and it was pretty neat because they had like the very first map that anyone had ever drawn of Italy. And I thought it was pretty cool that they were able to do it by foot, 
just by walking and draw the maps. And they were pretty accurate to the new ones that are up on the walls closer to the end. Um, the next place we went was Florence. Uh, we rode a train to Florence. It was a pretty long train and it was pretty bumpy, but it was very interesting. I think whenever we were going to Florence or either Pisa, there you had to have a card and we saw a man get chased by the security guy and then he ended up jumping off the train while we were still moving, which was pretty scary, but it was funny too at the same time because he was on there illegal, illegally. So, um, yeah. This is the Ponte Vecchio Bridge, and it's a marketplace, so they don't drive across it. It's more of a shopping place, and. Is it still the jewelry stores there? Huh? Is that jewelry stores? Like jewelry stores. Jewelry shops over there yeah, on the bridge, right? Yes. There's a bunch of, it's like just a bunch of little, what we would call boutiques. Yeah, um, they call boutiques, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Last time I was there, I was just little jewelry bits and stuff. Yeah, I thought, I just like the way, I didn't, I didn't walk all the way down it because I just didn't want to. I wanted to go back um, to the square thingy. But this is the leather capital of the world. That's why I wanted to go back to the squares because they had the huge marketplace and that was pretty cool and all the different little set of pop-up things that they put out every day. Um, this is the Dolma that we went up. Fun fact, I cried all the way up it. I'm extremely claustrophobic and it is made for very short people and it is also very narrow and dark. And there's 470 steps in it. So it was a long ways up. This is from the top of it though. So it was worth the view, but it was not a fun time for me personally. Um, this is in front of Santa Crochet Church. The front of it looks different than the back of it. And they recently, not recently, but comparatively to whenever it was made, they have redone the front to finish the, the same pattern that's on this church as well. Um, while we were in Florence, we went to the Fitzy Gallery and Galea's Museum. Um, this is the David, and he is exactly proportional and he follows the golden ratio. I did not realize how huge he was until we were standing there looking up at him. And I was very amazed by him. This is just another random set of statues that I took a picture of. And then this one's from Galileo's Museum. Um, Galileo's Museum was my favorite part of the entire trip. I thought it was very interesting, especially with the, we had like a guide inside of it and she was very interactive. She said she used to be a school teacher, so she, and a little kid school teacher, so she made everything interesting, and she brought replicas of things for us to look at and play with, which were pretty cool. But we got to see the first telescope, or what they remade of the first telescope, because it got washed away whenever it was flooded in Florence, and so they only had parts of it left. But this is like a sundial and a compass that was transportable. It was a gift. Yeah. And most of Florence was made by the Medici family. And all of them are buried in this large, large church that kind of looks gothic. The whole town actually looks pretty gothic, but I liked the town. Um, also, they had the best American restaurant <laughs> in it. <laughs> In all of Italy, I would say we went back three times. <laughs> me and Emily did. Some others went back twice, but me and Emily went three times because they had cheese sticks, which were really good. Very patrolling. <laughs> I mean, I ate it. I ate real Italian food, but at the same time, I missed American food. So they had wings and burgers. 
and ketchup and ranch. <laughs> then um, we took a day trip to Pisa. And this is the Leaning Tower. We learned that it's made on sand, so that's why it keeps shifting. And they're putting like beams on the inside, hoping to straighten it up a little bit, because if it keeps going, it's gonna fall all the way. So they put support beams inside of it. And this is the view from the top. I did not take this picture because after the Doma, I didn't go up another one. Um, I went up halfway of this, but yeah, I just didn't like it. So this is a picture that Caroline took from the very top. And this is the church and the basilica that's right beside the Leaning Tower. And right here is actually a grave, or where their burial site, not a grave, but where they keep a lot of dead people. And this is Stodonachi's tombstone. Um, and that's me in there with Fibonacci's tombstone. We went to Padua, but I didn't have any pictures from Padua, but that's where the first female graduated college. And um, it was pretty cool. We got to go inside of the university and look at the first, I guess, place where they show, for medicine, they show like operating rooms. So you got to go and look up at it. It was pretty cool to see how you, they used to do it. Now it's a little bit, they don't do the same. They have a much bigger room to do like the, the study of medicine for, but they still keep the old spot where you could go up under. But then our last two days we spent in Venice. And I love Venice because everywhere you went, you either had to walk or you could ride a water taxi. They put steps on their bridges so that you can't ride bikes across them. Um, there are no cars. We did ride a train into it, so you can go to the train station, but that's about it. And then this is um, the center square of Venice, the Santa Maria, and this is the most, um, I would say, I don't wanna say creepy because that's not the correct word to describe that church, but it is, it was, it gave a very bad scent. Like I did not like being in it at all. It was very strict on what you could and couldn't do. And it was just very dark and gloomy inside of it, which was very awkward for a church, I felt. I personally did not like it. But if you go up to the top of this, and there's a bell that rang um, some of my classmates were up there whenever it rained one time. They said it wasn't fun, but it didn't sound as loud from the ground. That was very painful. <laughs> we were directly underneath the bell at noon. Yeah. Oh, and up under here is like little restaurants, and it goes all the way around. So there's another wall that's right here. And it's they have like little market you know, like little carts that you can buy stuff from. And there were a lot of gypsies that we saw in Florence and in Venice, which were really cool. I've never seen one in real life, and that was pretty cool to see one. But they told us to be careful with them, too. And then here are some pictures. This is an illegal picture that I took of <laughs> the Sistine Chapel. Um, the, every square, or every rectangle, has the golden ratio in it. And um, Michelangelo painted it. He didn't like painting it because they told him what he could and couldn't paint. And so, yeah, it, it messed up his back after painting it. This is the same, this is the restaurant that I was talking about. Um, they made frozen margaritas, but it was kind of weird because they, they weren't frozen margaritas. He's, the man who owns the store is half Italian, half American, and he's from, or his mom lives in Boston, so it was much different. Then um, we had an afternoon off, and me and these three, Hannah, Morgan, and Emily, 
we kind of went on an adventure, but then we ended up getting lost, but not really lost. We knew how to get back because we all had GPSs. Um, but we went to a small little town that ended up being very pretty, and it was kind of cool to see the difference in between like what was in the cities that we were supposed to be in, like Rome and Florence and Venice. And then this was just a very small, it was kind of like a community. So it's kind of like being here, but much prettier buildings and much older buildings too. And then that's um, Amber and Adele. They graduated. And then there was an ice bar that was pretty cool. It was 15 below and it was about a 45 minute walk from the center of Rome. It, it was kind of hard to find. It's very small too. And then they had the, these little angels in the courtyard of the castle of St. Angelo. And I don't know, I just really liked it. I thought, it was, I thought they were pretty cute. But that's, yeah, all of us. These are my roommates, by the way, for the trip. And then this is a picture of the Trevi Fountain from behind. And right over here behind Emily's head is the stone that's out of place that um, we put up. And then this is our family dinner, our last family dinner we had as a group. And oh, and all the meals that we had, it took about two hours to eat. I was not expect, and we went to eat at like 8.30 or nine o'clock every night, which is normal for me, but I didn't think was normal for everyone. But that's what time, like they stayed open. Most restaurants, even nice restaurants, stayed open until 12 or one o'clock. The first, on our first day we got there, we went to eat. Once we got off our, once Will picked us up from the airport, we went back to the hotel, put our stuff down, and then we walked for, he said it was only like a 15 minute walk. It ended up being a 45 minute walk. And it was already 10.30 before we even got there. And we were like, is it not too late? And he's like, no, they stay up until about 12. And we were surprised because that's not normal here for restaurants to stay open so late. But that's the end. Do y'all have any questions? Yes. Uh, when you were in Venice, did they say anything about how they were able to build all of these buildings on the waterfront, on, on canals and so forth? Was that mentioned? Um, they talked a little bit about some of them because they're starting to sink. They, they were talking about how they're built on the wooden, um, beams. A lot of them are built on wooden and then they had another material that they put around the wood, but I forgot what it was called. Wait, well, our CIS person, he is half American, half Italian as well, but he told us that he, um, he really liked Venice. And so he studied a lot of Venice. So he was telling us about a bunch of random facts about Venice, but it was all when we were walking. So, and he walks really fast because he was really tall. And so I didn't get to hear much of it, but yeah. Okay, it's one of those things where you think, you know, I needed to have a pocket recorder in here to soak everything <laughs> up. Yes. Um, I, I just wondered about that because it's not a modern city, but it's, it's built on canals. I know that once a year, once, I think it's once a year for two days, they make a, like a bridge out of boats across. So like in Venice, there was water everywhere, of course. But then once you got to the square, there was like a huge opening of water where normally it was just small canals or slightly large canals, but not, this was a huge body of water. And they make it out of boats. So they line a whole bunch of boats up and then they lay down stuff to make it flat so you can go across it to go to like the churches across the way. So it makes like a new road just for two days out of the year, which was pretty cool. There's normally water there all the time? Oh, there's always water there, but they just line the boats up so that they're all, so the tops of the boats make it to where you can just travel across it by foot instead of actually having to drop the boat. I thought it was cool too that we saw where you could, your front door was like at the water. 
So where how we all have cars here, they had like boats. Whenever you turn 16 or however old you have to be, you get a boat instead of a car. You learn to drive a boat. But. Um, did you like learn about all the places that you went to during the semester and then y'all? For the most part, yes. Um, we also went to Leonardo da Vinci's museum. Um, I didn't have pictures from it, but it had the first algebra book in it ever. So that's what I did my project on whenever we were in class. So it was pretty cool to see it, but my phone died, so I didn't get to take pictures of it. But yeah. Any other questions? taxi was my favorite moment because that, that was pretty cool just to see the way that they all um, I guess they all get to work to and from work was pretty cool we went to a small island off of Mar um, right out of Venice called Murano and I really liked it it was a glass glowing island so it had glass you what effects are in the or, or, or actual what effects what effects is like? Huh? Well, is like what the bus was. Well, there were huge buses, but it said taxi on the top. Like we have the little yellow taxi signs on our cars. It had a little yellow taxi sign on the boats. But then whenever we went to the airport, they had a different boat that got us because it was a fast boat. So they had the slower boats, and then they had the fast boats to cross the big water, I guess. They were large, and the it was kind of weird to see how people interacted. Um, me, Morgan, and Emily, we went whenever we were in Rome. We ended up getting having to go back to the hotel for some, and so we all went as a group. Us three went as a group while everyone else stayed, and we were going there and then coming right back. And so we had to ride the monorail. And then we also had to ride the buses. The buses were the worst transportation possible unless you're really, really late at night. Because they were packed and a lot of people you stand like this close to everyone on the bus and they don't really care about personal space. <laughs> so, um, how, yeah. did you, how did you get tickets on the bus? Well, we had 72 hour passes. Oh, is that possible? So it worked for any public transportation because you had to ride a tram from our hotel to Rome and to um, the Vatican City and then also to the small town that we went to, we rode a tram out there. We ended up getting on the wrong one and so that's how we got out there. But yeah. um, all the food was really good, I do have to say, except for um, the appetizers I did not like. They had these little rice things, like fried rice with sauce and meat on the inside that I did not like at all. And it had a weird consistency. But the pasta was really good, and the wine was too. Did you do a full sport there? Was it took all the pictures of the but was it working as a form? Um, a lot of, there was a pretty good bit of students who didn't pay for the international plan, but my parents paid for it every day just because they, they were afraid and they wanted me to call them, be able to call them or call Miss Porter. So like Miss Porter paid for hers as well. And there was a couple of us, and most of the time, if we went off in groups and like we did our own things, because we had free time on a couple of days, and so we didn't have to be with the whole group but most of the time you would stay with somebody who had bought cellular service for the day because the Wi-Fi wasn't good in the cities, no. So it's a GPS, I mean, do you use GPS or you have internet on the phone? I, I use GPS, yeah. 
like I knew that I was okay because I had the data plan. So yeah, um, I will say that the last hotel that we stayed in, which was in Venice, that was for me and my roommates. We stayed in the attic, <laughs> and so it was very short. Um, our rooms were very short and fun size, and those were the smallest bathrooms. And our room was very outdated, so. It was just a weird situation. They don't turn on the air conditioning, fun fact. So it was how just hot. The, how was the weather? Um, it rained most of the time while we were there. <laughs> so the pictures look very different. Um, that's because I picked the good pictures. It, it rained a pretty good bit, and it was cold. Very, very cold most of the time. Why would you need air conditioning? Well, some days it wasn't cold after it <laughs> rained. But on the days, like, Okay, so right before it would rain, it'd be extremely cold, and then it'd rain, and so you were cold from the water. And then the next day it'd be hot. And then once we would go to a new city, the place that we had just left was sunshine and beautiful. And it happened the entire time. So there was no weather to cool or nice to warm? Not really. Whenever we went to Pisa and Padua, it was hot, and we had to walk about an hour and a half to go to the University of Padua and to go to the um, Leaning Tower of Pisa from the train station. So we rode trains once we got there. We rode a train to each city. And then what happens to your luggage? I say you have a carry on when you were at Well, whenever we went to Pisa, we just took a day trip. To, okay, so from Florence, or from Rome to Florence, you just had your luggage beside you. Um, and then, to go to Pisa, we took a day trip, so we came right back to Florence. So we didn't move our luggage at all. But whenever we went to Padua, because we didn't want to be carrying around all our luggage all around like the city, um, since we were there all day long, and we were moving on to Venice after we left Padua, we left it in the like train station. They had a luggage holding place that we could leave it, and we just paid for it. It was like five euros per bag, but they held it for us all day and nobody's stuff was missing, so that's a plus. But yeah. Do you, um, would you recommend the, the trip? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I would. I enjoyed it. I, I did. Um, there were some parts that I didn't particularly like, but other students did, but then at times that I really liked certain things, they didn't like it as much. So I thought it was a good balance. And Miss Porter let us have enough, like it, at first everything was very, it was overbooked at, whenever we first got there because Miss Porter was just learning as we kind of went. And she's like, I've never done this, so we kind of just went with the flow. And we had a very detailed itinerary but then that our itinerary just kind of went out the window because a lot of things got, it was because of weather and because you didn't realize how far certain things were away from each other that so they tried to adjustment to the weather. Yeah, and that was, in Rome we stuck with the itinerary pretty much every day and everyone was pretty miserable because in America you don't walk as much, but there you walk everywhere. And so like, it was like 30 miles. It felt like we were walking in those three days in Rome and nobody was used to that. So then once we got to Florence, we kind of, she adjusted everything and it was a lot more s slow paced, but you got to learn more about the things that we did. So at first we were just kind of seeing everything and going fast through it. But then once we slowed down, you got to learn more about what it was we were looking at. break up with the tour guide. That was fun. Oh, yeah, that, that was insane. Will was awesome. Or are you talking about the... I was talking oh, about the one in Florence. I told one. him about that. I said that she spoke... It's not Spanglish. It would be half Italian, half English. And she was talking in a very heavy accent. So. But the tour guides in um, Padua were very good as well, like for the university, the lady who gave the tour, she spoke really good English and she was clear and loud and that was pretty, she did a good job. And then in Rome, they did a good job, but 
Florence was the only bad one. Like, and it was really, really bad. That was standard line, but the Vatican City was really fit to the gallery. Was there any lines or were booked, so you just walked right in the group or how did it work? We already had our tickets yeah. because CIS had already gave them the wheel, so we didn't wait in line. We just kind of went in. We waited for all of our group to get together, and then we went in as a group. But at the same time, once we got in as a group, we just were in there, and um, then you could do what you wanted, which ended up, it, you kind of should have stayed on path with everyone and not left a whole bunch of people, because if you finished, they don't let you go back through. So Will had to, get the guards to let them in because half of us were in the Sistine Chapel and half of them had already finished and like left all of the museum. So you couldn't backtrack to come back to us until he went and talked to them and let them come back in. So I, I would say that I wish that they would, like some of the group decided to go off on their own, which Miss Porter was like, it was okay at first, but then once they finished, it, we had to wait an hour on them to come back to where we were, which wasn't, it made us miss other things, but. So after that incident, they were traveling with a group, um, Well, we did in the Vatican City, not as much. Like some places, when, especially whenever we got to Venice, because there wasn't as much for us to, we had to go to the, Center Square or whatever it's called. St. Mark's. Yeah, I, that's, that's what I was wondering if it was called, but I didn't want to call it the wrong thing. But um, whenever we had to go there in Venice, we all had to be there as a group. But pretty much the rest of Venice, you could go in your own groups. As long as you were at a certain place, whenever we had certain things to do, you had to meet at the place and make sure you were with, you couldn't go off by yourself anywhere. And Ms. Porter preferred for them to be at least groups of three. But yeah, um, we found a Burger King and a McDonald's in Rome and in Venice. Yeah. Like the first nights we got there, that's why Dr. Bell is because we didn't know where to go. So we figured if we find fast food, it'd be easier to eat right quick. Do you ever see yourself either going back there or somewhere else, like um, one day, you know, maybe you know, far off or, or, or um, in the very near future? Oh. Um, I want to be a flight attendant, so I would like to travel a lot, and that's why I want to be a flight attendant. And so I want to do that for a little while, at least while I'm young. So I would definitely go back. they made us do you had to write an essay once we got back which was due like 30 days after we got back and then you also have to give a presentation to a group of people or they charge you for the, the scholarship you received from the university so if you're interested that's just a fun fact <laughs> ended up paying for it for us to go to, but Miss Porter let us a few things. We got a choice between whether we, she gave us like two options. 
and sometimes it cost and sometimes it didn't but most of the time it wasn't really expensive most like most of the things that we were going to do that day weren't extremely expensive like for example what kind of trip so like we could go to the botanical well we could have went to the botanical gardens or we could have went to I don't know what we went to instead because it rained. I really wanted to go to the botanical gardens, but it rained, so we didn't get to go. But the botanical gardens would have costed some money, and that's what the majority of the group had said, but since it rained, we didn't get to go. So we went and done, I think the singing church, or they did like a church service on the hill instead of it. I, I assume that like all the activities are prepared, like botanical gardens, No, you could well, sh we would have needed to pay for it like the day before, but not. And if we did something like that, Miss Porter would pay for it, and then we would agree on paying her back for it. So, like, she would just make one transaction, and then everyone would give her however many euros it was. And we learned that you should only use certain banks to do money transfer because they'll charge you a lot if you... Like to withdraw money like from cash machines or... Yeah, um, you, you don't go to the anything that has a currency on the top of it, you don't go to any of those because they charge you extremely high fees to change your money over. So whenever we would go, I went, I went to the ATM, one in every, every major city that I went to, I withdrew money. So um, I only did it three times, but it wasn't extremely expensive. They just, it was a decent amount though. How much, how much spending money do you think would be a good amount to pay? Or how much did you take and was it enough? Or, or just what were, just maybe what would you recommend would be a good amount? To um, it depends on. Okay, so if you if you want like purses and stuff, of course you need to bring more money because um, if especially if you like leather purses, they were really nice. I ended up buying one from Florence, um, and I bought a couple of other souvenirs and food, of course, during the day because they paid for I think eleven meals, but then we paid for some of our meals. The food wasn't that expensive, but also the portion size is. For lunch was extremely small so most of the time you got a sandwich this size and so you needed to buy like two of them instead of one because we wouldn't eat again until eight or nine at night so I would say I think that I spent close to eight hundred dollars but that's because I bought souvenirs from my grandmother and my mom because they asked me to so that's for them, but for me, I probably only spent 500 on me, and that was with food and things that I wanted to do and other things that cost fees for us to go into. I only spent 100, like $50. <laughs> well, it all depends. I bought makeup and clothes so and shoes. Actually, I bought three. Oh, yes, it rained. <laughs> hang, hang on. No, it rained, though, Ryan. <laughs> It rained, and I ruined my tennis shoes. So I was stuck with sandals, and we were doing a lot of walking, and so they hurt my feet. So then I went and bought two pairs of tennis shoes in case it rained again <laughs> because we didn't have enough time to let the shoes dry out, and so my shoes mildewed and were disgusting. But well, you bought two of the pairs of tennis shoes. It was a sale. It was a sale. It really was. Larry was with me. It was a sale. <laughs> I mean, I only paid 80 euros for both, like, together. So 40 euros a piece. That's cheaper than here. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just really, you have to know yourself and know if you will spend money. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right. Good job.